all the way from the United States of America. She says she's loved to show and she's delighted to share her story, her confession with us. We are ready to listen. My studio audience, as usual, are ready and excited. My counselors are ready too, and we're going to have a great time of conversations and education as well. Please don't go away. I'll be right back. Ghana, it's amazing. This young lady came all the way from the United States of America. Oh, she is Ghanaian, but she says she's been a great fan of confessions. And she came in and she wanted to share her life story, her confession with us. And I'm delighted to have her. Hi, my lady. Hi, Miss Nancy. Thank Welcome you. home. Thank you very much. And uh, what is your story? Share with us your confession. As she said, I was following confessions on Facebook. Okay. And... I love the input coming in and I feel my situation would get the needed advice mm. here. So thank you so much once again. Sure, go ahead. Um, it was one faithful Valentine Day and mm -hmm. I decided to surprise my husband at work. So I sent him a bouquet of cash. You know, I felt like flowers were a bit outdated for me. Mm. So I did cash instead and got him an expensive cologne. Mm. Hoping that this man will get home and then we'll have it, like, you know, a cute, cute of session. Of course. But he got home and he was on his phone. He didn't even acknowledge what I did. Mm. So naturally, I was curious. Mm. When he left to bath, I saw that his phone kept getting notifications. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as curious as I was, I decided to probe. And this is not like me because I value people's privacy. Mm. But then... I couldn't help it. Mm -hmm. So I took his phone and it was a lady he was talking to. And the mm. lady was like, I can't sleep. I'm thinking of you. I miss you. It's like, mm. wow, my husband. On Val's Day. On Val's Day, Miss oh. Nancy. And the thing is, you know, looking at what I saw, I wanted to, you know, find out more. So I read their chats. And apparently, they're planning on taking a trip to the UK. Okay. He's planning on leaving me, that's it. To stay with... I mean, a visit with the other woman or he's planning on leaving you, like leaving the marriage? He's planning on leaving the marriage. Okay. I mean, if it was a vacation, I feel like I'm naturally a forgiven person, so just maybe I would have overlooked it. But here lies the case. He wanted to make a fool out of me, leave with a woman, empty our joint account, and go and start living with her in the in UK. The UK. So, I decided to turn the joke on him. Hmm. I emptied our joint account. Mm. I saw that he was keeping some foreign currency in our safe at home. I took that as well. Mm -hmm. I also had been saving up some money. Mm -hmm. So, I took that. And God being so good, I had a USA visa of 10 years, having six years. I next. almost gave you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, left the country with everything i emptied the house and left and my parents are late so it's not like he would have got information on any mm -hmm. from anyone concerning my mm. whereabouts so fast forward i've been in the uk for the six years and it's over sorry usa and i'm back here in ghana and i spoke to my cousin and she was telling me what has been happening in my absence saying mm -hmm. my husband has been drinking and oh. He's not his usual self. Poor dude. And initially I didn't really care, but then there was this part that really got to me that he, there was this day he was drinking and, you know, drunk driving, so he got involved in an accident. Oh. And I mean, I started to feel bad because I'm human after all. Of course, and that was your and husband. He's been in the hospital, he's crippled right now. But he can get better, but then they don't have the money for the surgery. I mean, I'm comfortable, I can afford it, but then I feel like I'm feeling some unforgiveness vibes and mm. I'm not ready to forgive him. But I still feel a bit guilty because I could have been a bigger person than we we'll talk things out instead of what I did yeah. six years earlier. And don't get 
a wrong. I'm not so bad a person. We didn't have kids, so it's not like I was leaving responsibility Just behind. With him. He has no sperm counts. This man was on perturbed. He wasn't taking his medication seriously. And every yeah. time I tried to do it, made me look like I was doing way too much. Yeah. So and he was chatting with other women and so having he was chatting other with, plans with other exactly. women. Exactly. So right now my problem is do I help him or not? Do I put aside that betrayal I felt six years earlier? Do I put aside the fact that my ego was shattered mm. because my husband was dealing with another woman? And thinking of leaving, me. of leaving you. I am in a dilemma. <sighs> well, she turned a joke on him. And after that, life decided to give him a good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. He is not in a good place right now. She's fine. She can help. Should she? Or should she not? People, this is Confessions. My studio audience are ready. My counselors are ready. Let's go into the studio and deal with this. I almost gave her a high five. Thank you, people. It's always a great pleasure to have all of you. Councillor Pastor Little, right? <laughs> and uh, Councillor Kelly Daniels, thank you so much for joining us. Her confession. Right. This man decided to do it to her. He had not done it yet. Probably he was just making this other girl on the other side of the phone feel good. But she says that if you've thought about it, you have the ability to do it, so let me do it to you first. Was she right? Um, two wrongs can't make a right in the first place, but um, I'd like to take them one after the other. They're both wrong. But then dealing with the man, first of all, as the supposed head of the marriage. Um, you see, an average man, unfortunately, doesn't know exactly what he wants. Okay. Because he's spoiled for supposed choices and variety mm. and multicolors. You're talking about the kinds of women in the system. Yes. But shouldn't you know would... the life you want to have? That's what I'm saying. The, the, the average man. The li life is not for the average, by the way. Mm. So I'm hitting on the point that this wasn't a man who was marriage ready at the time he exchange his vows mm. because he was physically being married to one person and then had other plans attached so mm. she had the ring the other woman had, had his heart. heart and so it's a toxic situation already mm. uh, this is a man who hadn't grown up to the point of discipline it's discipline that distinguishes men from boys. Mm. And from discipline comes responsibility. And then the, the manifestation of responsibility shows maturity. So it's discipline, responsibility, then we now can call you a mature person. So, so Kelly, there are right. so many men out there that are cheating, mm. having other issues beyond their homes. Do we say some people are super good at it and others are poor at it? Doesn't like some them... people are great because they keep their homes intact and they keep their side issues intact too. Doesn't make them responsible men. That you have a supposed responsible home and then you have side hustles out there doesn't make you a responsible man. Except we are not defining marriage the way marriage should be. The Bible makes us understand that marriage is to live and cleave. So you leave every other person, including your family, and click to this one woman and make a life out of her. So you not even give credit Anything to the men that are cheating that are never caught. Exactly. Cheating, you said. Yeah, cheating but they are never not, caught. And, uh, it doesn't change the fact. Who is marking the script? The woman or, or the one who instituted the marriage? The one inside the marriage? No, no. The one who should mark the matrimonial script is mm -hmm. the one who joined the two. And who is God himself. So men in the majority, unfortunately, think that as long as I'm taking care of my wife, and the home front, I can do whatever I like because they can't complain because they've gotten all they want or all they need. That's fallacy. That's wrong. So back to this particular man in question. He is a careless person mm. in every regard. 
you are supposed to be focused on making sure that your wife is pregnant. You have ignored that. You have ignored your meds. But what your focus is, is about pleasuring another woman, eloping with her, and starting another life with her. Having your own wife in the picture. This is a special day of which, okay, coincidentally, this woman finds out what's going on. What if the woman never found out? At what point were you meant to shatter and, and destroy her heart finally? So that was the man's plight. Mm. But then the woman, uh, like I said, two wrongs don't make a right. And so no matter how vindictive she could possibly uh, make it, she's not, at the moment, she's still not a happy woman. So it doesn't make you happier paying bad for bad. I feel that she should have made him know exactly what had happened and divorce him happily at that point, rather than doing all the harm and then going out. So that he would out. use emotional blackmails, cry, so that they can split the money into two. No, no, and no. All of her. that. They are a couple, regardless. The, the, all the harm has been done. This is a couple now, and they need to move on, either separately or together. Regardless, there has to be amicable a separation, mutual understanding, rather than causing more harm. Pastor Ledo. Yeah, Look at uh, this man chatting. We all know that men can talk. They will sugarcoat it. They will exaggerate their plans. They want you on Valentine's Day to stay at home, thinking he's got plans for you because he's a married man who needs to be with his wife. So he will say things to you that will keep you, the single woman at home, waiting for him. So he can promise you the world, I will leave my wife for you. I will do that, 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 so that you believe him. Don't you think that probably... In all honesty, it was just talk, and he meant not to put it into action. It's an interesting topic, once again. You look at it, and most men will, like my brother Kelly said, will want to just play around. Just, mm -hmm. some use the word, flecked around. Try mm -hmm. to try their egos, test their abilities. Some are just adventurous and the like. But marriage is an institution. And those of us who are from a religious perspective who classify it as a, a holy and solemn, these descriptions bring it on board. Mm -hmm. Looking at a man on the day, a very important day for love, celebrating love like Valentine's Day, that your wife has bought you something so interesting, so nice, and one, you are not appreciating her, hmm. two, you are with somebody on phone. Chatting. Chatting with On the person. Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. It gives clearly the basis of the marriage. Mm. Like Pastor Kelly said, that the foundation of the marriage was and is shaking. Mm. And a lot of marriages in the contemporary setting are also shaking because we don't take time to understand what the idea of marriage is mm. before we go into it. And the process we are trying to engage now that marriage is a lifelong union of one man and one woman. It's mm. never about an event. Mm. So I want five brides made, I want ten brides made, mm. I'll do it at an event That's center. All. There's gonna the be center, green. Yeah. The center, the flowers. Green with a touch champagne. of golden purple. A cake that is coming from up or descending or ascending. And you are looking for uh, tags, hashtag, Kelly and something, uh, a nice, nice name. Kelly Ma 2023. <laughs> Kelly Ma 2023. It means Kelly and Ama. And Ama, Kelly Ma. Kelly wow. Ma 2023. Wow. So nice. Oh, I will officiate that wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I will be in a big fascinator. Oh, so that is what our sisters think about. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so nice. It was on Instagram everywhere. Everybody was watching it. I mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> but going deep into the responsibility of marriage, what is required of those who are in the context of marriage, marriage is not for small boys mm. and girls. So this man in question behaved, like he said, as a small, small boy. boy. Because if your wife is here, think about your wife. Appreciate it. She's even done something and you are not appreciating her, and you are with another woman. woman. Back to the question. Men have the ability to sugarcoat. So our mm -hmm. sisters out there who are listening, if he's married, the mere fact that one, he saw you, left you, married the wife, means that he sees something in the wife that you don't have. 
Pro please. Probably they met us after they got married and we are wow like that. Please be kind to the side chicks. <laughs> the, the term is still side chick and you'll yes. be side. Yeah. You are not the main because there's something the main have that is divine. And, and sometimes it's, it's just a ring. And yes a signature. And no. Yes and no. Um, yes and no because marriage has a spiritual dimension. Yes. The bonding is divine. Between mm. man and wife. And once they are bonded, mm. and like he said, God have put them together. Mm. No matter what you do, you'll be a side chick. So side chicks beware. In this context, you may have the money, you may have the nice words, but madame is madame. Hey. Ebe yo bi ya o. Madame is madame. <laughs> madame is madame indeed. Yes, okay. Um, Auntie, Miss Nasi. Yes. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> okay, um, to me, if I were to be the lady, mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to help you in the first place. I'm going to play, uh, pay a revenge mm. to the man because if even still you are fit, I don't think you're going to get back to me. But the guy didn't even eventually get married to this young woman. He's been alone. He's been devastated. He's been drinking about and was actually drunk driving and got into an accident. I think that at this point we should call our counselor in. Or did you have something to say? Well, you do. The young lady by right. you, please, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Nancy. The name I is? I think Gifty. Hi, Gifty. <laughs> Your first time on Confessions, yes, right? Yes, please. Awesome. Go ahead. Okay, so I think the lady made a quick decision mm -hmm. um, because after seeing that on your husband's phone, I would say that we all have our privacy. Mm -hmm. In the first place, you don't have to go into your husband's phone, mm -hmm. but you did that because he wasn't paying attention to your, your little gifts you, you gave, gave him. Yeah. And then you seen that on his phone, after he came back from the bathroom, you could have sat him down, questioned him. Maybe he's actually flexing, not knowing, not mean what he's saying. Some men would want to like flex, but still say sweet things to the other lady so that they feel like, oh, after all, he's leaving his wife no to me. me. Yes. So, I think the Mehdi made a quick decision. Okay. Somebody thinks that this lady made a very quick decision. But ladies and gentlemen, it simply could have been a guy that dressed up, went to work, and never came back home. And what would have been the state of this woman who was committed to the marriage and to her husband let me, at this point, invite our wonderful counselor, Edumata, to the studio. <laughs> Please have a seat. Thank you, It's Mom. always such a delight to have you in the studio. It is, it is so great to always see you mm. and being with you. Mm. You're very deep, mm. incisive, and you're trying to always try to give us a solution <laughs> to what we have. Kudos. I am humbled, sir. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, too. Always a delight to have Councillor Edumata. Councillor. Yes, ma'am. The story. Yeah. She read words that broke her heart, words that made her feel insecure about her future with a man she loved. She decided that so long as you have said it, you can do it. Now I know and I have the power to outdo you. So let me just do it. Was she not smart? Um, Ms. Nancy, thank you so much. And my regards to Pastor Little and Kelly Daniels. Um, if it's a, we are looking at it from the marriage context. Mm -hmm. In marriage, faulting me is part of marriage. Mm. Breaking me down is mm -hmm. part of it. Mm. In other words, the demesis that goes into marriage mm -hmm. is marriage. Mm. And so before you go in, you need to know that these things will be coming. Yeah. And when they do come, how you react makes you to own your marriage. Mm. We should understand this. Mm. 
Another aspect is that you don't marry the person, but you marry the life of that person. Mm. So you turn out to become the doctor and the patient sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if the heart is not working, you cannot move to the next, next stage. stage. So if you see me as a person, then you will treat me as a person. Mm. But if you see me as a spirit, you go beyond me. Mm. These are the nitty gritty of marriage so that we can really be able to understand. But pay somebody back based on something you saw will not, as it were, make you even happy afterwards. But I'm she's saying, been fine. I'm she's been fine this, for six years. Yes, I'm saying this because, you see, there were a lot of missing links. The missing link here is that the lady, did she find out from the husband mm -hmm. where from that woman? What is the relationship with the woman? How long has this been so far? All of that information was given through the chats that she chanced on. And was there a direct question as to asking the man, who no. is this? Fantastic. So it is what I saw and what I feel is what is in me. And so I'll pay you back. That is hurting. That is anger. That is betrayal. Mm. So you, you just sort of gotten your own picture of what you want. Meanwhile, you've not gotten the exact fact. So I for you... That, yeah. You, you're thinking that the guy did not work out in Swan Ray. Well, you know, so I would say that in marriage, one of the key things that all of us, those of us marrying, we should be prepared to hold on to is that there will always be a revelation. Whenever there is a revelation, you are prepared to be redeemed. Hmm. So the revelation and redemption will actually work well if you know how to handle it. But so this is God has revealed I read. to you. Yes, that I is revelation. That's revelation. You've seen it. There's something I want to discuss with you. There's this I'm saying. Uh, is, it, is it that I'm imagining? Well, mm. What you say, I love you. Yes. I will leave my wife yes. for you. Take my word for yes. it. I'm making preparations yes. so we can relocate yes. to the United Kingdom. Yes. I, I read my husband say these words so to another woman. So you've got options. Is either you go straight to ask or you go see Pastor Little or Kelly as a counselor that, hey, this is happening between our marriages. I just want to know the real fact. Yeah, Fantoni and discuss it. You don't do that, but you sit in that corner and assume that, hey, we'll be boom Hey, we'll be coming. Hey, say no, me. And this is what kills the marriage. So let's stop, let's stop thinking in our own sort of mind and then conjure our so, own so, so as far as marriages are concerned, even when you see, yes. you should still ask. Ask. Factual. You see, when you base everything you see in marriage as opinion, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see. but you should go there and ask facts. That's what we want. Because somebody can sit somewhere and conjure something for their torso. No, we use a scenario from A, B, not your boom, or say, I'm part of We need to now understand what we are marrying. And, and I heard Kelly saying that from, from maturity to something, something. I like that analysis. It's so good. Because you cannot just become a mature person when you don't have that responsibility and discipline. If it's not there, forget it. Okay. Thank you. Thank this you. is good. The gentleman that decided to say such hurtful things. Yes. A man could be a flirt. Yes. He could be a womanizer. But, I mean, I was asking Kelly, can't yes. we have better womanizers? Yes. Can't we have better flex? Can't we have better men who have side chicks? Mm. Do you have to tell this young woman that I will marry you? I will leave my wife for you? Miss Nancy. On your guy, who so, does that? My main kind of cribbing show. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me today give a secret of all men. Tell me. Before a man who is married will go out there to stretch the neck to propose to another woman, and your baby will free by another honey. Mm. It means, as either I have been telling my wife, stop it. 
I don't like it. Do this. You are not doing anything to lift me. So you are giving me an open door. This is mm -hmm. to their own understanding. Every man. And for the woman, when the attention is not given, they do that. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So I am asking, was she there when the man was looking for her? Was she available? Was she listened to? Was she succumbing? Was she sort of, sort of uh, subjected to the things the man was asking? Because that is what every man needs. Sometimes people are there, but they are not present. Fantastic! That's it! Mm. She was missing. Mm. And the man needed somebody who can be there, who can talk to me, who can... And let me tell you, per what we do and the men, what they tell us, this is all that they need. It is a solution to my survival. That is what goes on. So, if, if, if before the woman can conclude, she should ask, Where have I gone wrong? You see, I always say that before you say, it is, you, what do you do? It takes two. Look inwardly. Exactly. Look that is outwardly. where the start. I always said, when you start questioning yourself, you will understand where the fault is. Awesome. Rather than blaming the other party. That was not done. Thank and you. that is that. And so the man too, looking at it, and then you decide to go. I didn't know how probably the man was able to sort of uh, ask that don't do it. I don't, I don't like it. I don't know the, con con uh, the conversation that had actually no. transpired. But the act was also totally wrong. And let me conclude this. Phone. I read when smartphone was coming, article, yeah. ages ago, the devil in your power. Huh. Any husband or wife who you are doing this, cheating, calling, dealing with any side checks, never use your phone. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, Test cool. messages. So I'm floating on your channel. Yeah, you, huh? you, where you tell me. No, don't do it. Because it's a total betrayal of your own self. If you will do it, you have to be smart about Maria. it. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to understand that. If you me. have to cheat, yes. make sure you are not caught. Yes. The telephone can betray you. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Alafia, you've been looking at me. Is it because I'm looking beautiful or you have so much to say? Miss Nancy. Yes. Mr. Alafia. <laughs> Mr. Clark, go ahead. There's this thing I want to tell the ladies. Mm -hmm. You see, there's no one man for one woman. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I know Mr. <laughs> Councillor Kelly. I'm listening to oh, you. No, Councillor Kelly, Kelly will always not I, agree with me. I've but Kelly, said a word. Kelly. But you see, Thank I'm you. always practical. Yeah. In a can, you say, or by a nipper. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the truth from ages throughout the Bible. The wealthiest men they were having other ladies. Yeah. Okay. I want the ladies to put this in their head. When you say this, people think you are evil, you are a humanizer or whatever. But that is the truth. How many rich men, wives, you see them nagging? Mm -hmm. You don't see rich men, wives nagging. It is only the middle men and the so-called uh, people. Mm -hmm. that That's their, their wives. wives, their concubines, their girlfriends or whatever. They keep nagging. Mm. No rich man's wife. Look at it. The presidents, well. their wives will not go and get their phones. Mm -hmm. And one thing that the, the lady keeps saying, I, I sent some gifts and whatever. Did she find out whether the president got to the point that she was expecting? Mm -hmm. Because you see, men, we are smart, we are bad, but we appreciate good things. Yeah. I am sure if the man had received the gift or the present on that day, when he got home, he would have said something, do something, react in a particular way, and then continue with his antics. You've never met a man who is too familiar, no, who no, doesn't show appreciation for anything. 
I call Fine. them here in Stubborn Proud. Okay, yeah. it's nice. Yeah, we're not sure. Yeah, we're not sure. Mm. But please, sometimes we have to go deeper. Like Councillor was saying, when I was looking for her, sometimes she don't give me, you know, sex in bed at mm. night. In mm -hmm. the morning, I request for it. You don't give it to me mm. at dawn. 4 a.m., 5 a.m. You don't give it, give to, it to me. me. Now, on Valentine's, on Valentine's Day, Day, you send me gifts. When I, I receive the gift and I come home, will you give me that sexy, mm. uh, uh, sexy night? Mm -hmm. That sex will not come. And I'm a man. I will drive for sex. Our black man, black men, our drive for sex is so high. Mm. It's oh, yeah, very, very high. Mm. Most of us. So see, women should try and give men what they deserve mm -hmm. so that we can also compliment them for what, whatever they are. I love the conversation and how it's going. Let us talk about loving our partners such as they want to be loved, not how we want to love them. In this case, she said she sent a bouquet of cash to her husband's office and a beautiful scent of perfume for her husband to use, mm. and he did not show appreciation. Could it be that is not what he needed from her? Yes. And so many men are doing same. Yes. I bought a car for yeah. you. I bought you a curved TV. You are living in a mansion. Why are you complaining? Loving a partner such as they want to be loved. Pass a little. Um, first of all, I want to bring this point that it is possible to love one woman. It is possible to, to love, love one only one woman. So you love only your wife? Yes. Is she the only woman you have loved or she's the one you decided to love? It is possible to love only one woman. It is in the mind. And the notion that African men have that tendency. Are polygamous by nature. The word is potentially polygamous. Mm. Even the African tradition, we're not discussing that here, but even African tradition marriages, mm -hmm. we call it potentially polygamous. Gamos. And if you listen to our African proverbs, which means African traditional settings do not uphold the idea of polygamy. Oh, it does. So for you know those who are when you need to come to you know most of those who are when you need to come to my put to my doors one and now it's a cow put to my who are to do a and your body as I want to say say we don't know what else one not and quantum pun so at the one at the door so that is when a man does not know the art yes. of polygamy can we move on, sir? <laughs> so moving on. <laughs> we have to love people in their love language. And in this, yes. obviously, we have to love people in the context they understand themselves. Miti yeah. hei oh, card. You've not done anything. Card mm. is like... Oh, any, really? Mm. I mean, yeah. you are very English. You see, yes, you very... You card, I mean, yeah. Or if you, in the morning, you give me maybe rise. And you know that. If you give me some body and PC, Thank that you. Hand, then, uh. So you have to understand who I am, yes, what so. I like, yes. and then you meet me squarely Fantastic. at that level. Whilst we are still there, can you give us some of the ways that a typical Ghanaian man would want to be loved? Very good. You see, love has a social cultural perspective, yeah. a social context, how we have been trained, mm -hmm. how we have grown. Mm. And see, in our minds, there are some receptors that recept, receive, for example, how my mother have trained yeah. me, mm. how my aunties, how the society. So I want to feel that in my wife in my husband. So we call them traditional roles. Whether you like it or not, they are imprinted in the minds of people as they go to marriage. Yeah. I expect my husband growing up, maybe my father will come and we'll go and hug him. So as a man, I expect my wife to come and hug me. That yeah. olden day, it's society have put in some yeah. in our minds. Yeah. Then we have what we call contemporary expectations. Mm -hmm. And then, 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 then. And then, then, then. What is happening now? Maybe I will want to eat fufu, but I can't pound, but I have to go to the machine. That is mm -hmm. contemporary mm -hmm. expectation. expectations. So we love people from the traditional perspective and yes. we love people in the contemporary context. Yeah. Then we have individual perspective to love. Exactly. Each and every individual is unique. Yeah. So for example, you, your husband may want Something that will beat your man. He may want PS5. A big man with beard. And he wants, and he wants to PlayStation play games. 5. Maybe games. It's like, what? But that is what individually to him. Mm -hmm. So if you know what the person wants individually, then you can meet that also at that level. Mm. 
thank you. You have no business saying that the man you married loves games, PS5, so he is a child. He is a child in an adult's body, so you are not going to buy it. Love them such as they want to be loved, not how you want to love them. People, let me take this break. I will be right back. Okay, so to me, sincerely speaking, the lady is right because you've been married to someone. Any single decision you take, you have to share that single decision with the person. I think um, the lady isn't going to the extreme of, of getting what is rightfully hers because she has once, once upon a time helped the guy. So it's not time for her to also reckon all that she has been able to, to invest in the guy. I feel like she's being disrespected in the marriage. Because how can you be together with someone for seven years, married for four years, and you decide to do this with her, to her, then you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I don't think what a woman is doing is wrong in any way, because she has been fooled by the man. You are welcome back. This is Confessions on TV3. And tonight, she came all the way from the United States of America with her confession. And we are listening, and we are doing justice to it. Already... We know how men want to be loved. And I have counselor Kelly here. Right. And uh, Kelly, uh, you know women. You talk to women. Mm. You told me majority of your clients are women. How do we want to be loved? I love roses. I love champagne. And I love you to spend on me. Well, I'm not going to talk about the gift dimension because every woman is, is different from every other woman in mm. terms of what they might desire. You might want a rose. Uh, somebody else might call it contemporary. Yeah. But a woman <laughs> in A rose Ghana, contemporary, right? Exactly. <laughs> a woman anywhere else, yeah. regardless, the first thing any woman in the world needs is security. Mm. Let me know how priceless I am to you. Mm. Once I have that, 50% of the my work. cares in this world it's are gone. solved. We agree. Give me security. Ladies, don't we agree? Oh, give a hand for counselor. Security is peace of mind for a lady. And the second one, which looks like it but not it, is what I call intentional attention. Mm. You've got to be intentional about giving her attention. attention. Now, there's a difference between attention and presence. Mm. Mm. A woman would choose attention over mm -hmm. presence. presence because you can be there and you are really? far away. Mm. Attention is that even when you are far away, you are voluntarily, without her asking, sending her pictures of where you are, what you're doing. In fact, sending Google locations. Okay, I'm now here. I'm now, not because she's going to find you or coming to look for you, just attention. Keeping her involved. Keeping in touch. Every now and then, an average man should communicate with his wife nothing less than 10 times a day mm. in absence. Mm. Nothing less than 10 times. And you can't repeat yourself. There must be something new at every conversation. A woman wants attention. attention. Thirdly, a woman wants company. Mm. What is company? Creates an environment for her in your presence or absence, where she feels at home. Mm. If you don't give her that, she has nothing to work with. Mm. A woman's playground, a woman's natural propensity is to grow what you give to her. Mm. And the best gift you can give to a woman is an environment where she feels like the wife, the mother, the queen. Uh, I might go on and on, but let me just add this beautiful. last one. Mm -hmm. You see... When a woman has, a, there's a difference between security and assurance in, in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Assurance is what you give to your wife when you make every other person know that this is my wife. Is your I adore wife. her. You say this to her, you say this to them to her hearing, you mm. say this to her to their hearing, and you say this to them to her hearing as well. Mm. So none of your siblings messes around, mm. disrespects your wife. Mm. Even your parents have to talk honorably to your yeah. wife in your presence or absence. You mm. see these four things, any man who has it has gotten a queen for life. Girl, is that all we want? I mean, solid points, yeah. man. Yeah. That was great. That was great. But 
Okay, I want to talk about the lady and the guy, then I'll come to how to laugh. Okay. Okay, so I'll talk about the lady first. Yes. Okay, if I were, I were to be the lady, I'll make sure seeing the messages and then going through, I'll sit with my husband, Good. talk to him, and then maybe we all decide to divorce ourselves. If he had text that I was, I'm going to kill her for you, would you still sit? <laughs> or you will run? That one is killed. This one is going with the lady. Mm. So I will sit with him and then talk to him that this is what I saw. Maybe I read through your message. Yeah. Then maybe we come together and then decide to divorce ourselves. We go our separate ways. Maybe you can use that one as a proof so you can take a screenshot, send it to your WhatsApp, and then when you get to court, you can show it to them that everything shows your husband has been spending on that lady. So mm. for him to appreciate you, you go with the um, joint account and everything. It's cool. Let's come to the guy's side. What if the lady did that thing to the guy mm -hmm. and then also um, decided to maybe run away with maybe a man and then also mm -hmm. the man being in that shoe? Mm -hmm. That one, no one is seeing it. Mm. Let's take it. The lady traveled with the money. That's why the man decided to drink and then maybe got that accident. What if the lady, after reading the messages, um, the guy, the man, that's the man, Trying to run with the lady, didn't run, but maybe trying to get the money and rather live with the wife. What of that one? We are not thinking about that one too. Mm. You get it? Yeah. Maybe he, he was just playing along to get the money. Something. Something from the other the woman. The other woman maybe travel with the lady. Mm. What of that one? Well. So, <laughs> let's, uh, let's put that one as long What long if? Long. Plenty yeah. of what ifs. Yes. yes. Now the reason she came to confessions. Right. The gentleman in question has never been the same after yes. the separation. Yes. He's become a drunkard. Yeah. I need us, first of all, to talk about divorces and separations and what it does to us. And then we will talk about whether or not she needs to go in and give financial support to help this man indeed in need. So first of all, the effects of divorce and separations. We hardly talk about it. We are very, very swift in saying, let him go, let her go. You the one letting go. What happens to you? How do you feel? Ms. Nancy, this is a multi-dollar question you're asking. Mm. But today, let me put in a simple form. When the word divorce is mentioned, it means you are ashamed of me. Mm. You are ashamed of me. Mm. What it means is that I was nothing to you. But again, the name divorce, there are two people involved. There is the one that wants to go. Mm -hmm. And there is one that says, I will make a mat. Alright? Now, the way on. Always think I am right, I, am, I know what is good for me, and everything is right, 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 yes. It is when you go and you feel the loneliness, it's disaster. Mm. It's disaster. When you try to sit and remiss it, the afterthought, I didn't know my I should have taken my time. There's, these are the people that are dying gradually. Mm. I've made a mistake. I shouldn't have listened to Kominini. Because at that moment, you were. Static saying, I want to leave because you think you're sure. Mm. It is when you go certain aloof and then you start reasoning, they realize that there's emptiness in you. Mm -hmm. That emptiness can destroy you. Yes, yes, yes. Kelly, um, we're uh, wrapping up. Just literally adding to what has been said at this point, this is the best thing to say. But mm. I need to point out something that she doesn't understand. You see, Marriage doesn't give happiness. Mm. I like that. You don't go into marriage to be happy. Sure. It's the happiness that you have that reflects in the matrimony. So if I come with my personal happiness and you come with mine, we will be fine. What I'm trying to say is that everyone owes him or herself that gift of happiness sure. that no man can give. Because no one can love you rightly so perfectly as much as you, you can love yourself. And so letting go and releasing this man in her heart is the best gift she can give to this herself at the moment. Should she support that, the man? 
I mean, that is the symbol of, of, of happiness, of letting go. Why, why not? If she couldn't, if, I mean, she, we are not saying sacrificially help the man. She can afford it. It's something that she'll let go of and wouldn't feel a thing. So basically, let's understand that uh, self-happiness mm -hmm. is key. Whatever happens, and the, tr and the truth of the matter is this. If she doesn't do this, somehow, somewhere, God in his sovereignty, if this man is, remor is remor remorseful, will get the help she would have given to her. And she will not live a better life. And this is the reason why. You are already toxic to yourself, toxic to your environment. Any young lady you see around you who wants to get married, hey, be careful. Men are this and men are that. If she has future children, she's going to put that same bitterness, unforgiveness, resentfulness in those kids raising demons to marry other people to make their marriages ruined. This is not what she's seen at the moment. She's only, only seen that entitlement of, and he did this to me, and he did that to me, and I deserve to show him, you know, something that, I mean, to show that I, I am also a person. You can't, you can't take my intelligence for granted. Marriage is not even for intelligent people anyway. It's for two fools. Sure. Two sure. people who are willing to give the best of their lowest to make sure that the cost is elevated. Thank you, Kelly. Wrapping up the yes. show. And my lady, have you been helped? Yes, please. And uh, what is your take home? I had one thing from Councillor Dumata, and it had to do with let go and let go. Mm. In the long run, I'm helping myself. If I really want to be happy, I need to let go. So you're going to help those gentlemen? Yes, please. Oh. Thank you. You deserve the clap. What celebration? This is a celebration. This is awesome that we were able to get a better woman. In the spirit of love, in the spirit of Valentine, it's almost Valentine. I am encouraging you that love is essential for our existence. People that love look better, feel better, behave better. People without love are bitter, they are sick. So if you are weary of love, I'm encouraging you that in the spirit of Valentine, find love, have the strength to receive love, and have even a bigger strength to give love. I'm wishing you all the love that this universe has to offer. Excellent. My name is Miss Nancy. This Excellent. has been Confessions on TV3. I love you same time next week. I come your way. Thank you. Excellent.